including our friend from all the way from the Ndonga Royal House, our friends from South Africa, from the South African High Commission, our close neighbor who have devoted extra time, walking extra mile to bring about a gathering of this kind. Um, I've been around 
waiting in the wings between this place and the city, waiting for you to be ready and to take your places so that we can get off the ground. Finally, we are here. Now, um, what brought us together here is something relating to culture. Something relating to cultural values. We normally say those of us known as students of history, we talk about that a nation is a nation with various values in terms of culture, in terms of languages, and um, we are people, we've got a soul, who are motivated by things around us that help to identify who we are. Now, in most Bandu-speaking African communities, personal identity and social standing has been angered around maternal clanship. And that's the reason why we have this group that have teamed together to celebrate their cultural values and particularly as expressed through clanship. Um, this has been more noticeable among the Ochiherero speaking communities as represented by Ovatwe, Ovashimba, Ovademba, Ovahakaona, Ovambanderu, and Ovaherero, as well as as well as and I underline their cousins <coughs> among the countries, among the communities, and we start not far away from beyond a Tosha, over Ambo, Tsawana, Wabukushu, and the list can go on. And what is important here is to underline, we are talking about things that bind people together, help to promote cooperation, using culture as a bridge when you build a bridge, you are able to communicate beyond your village, beyond your region, beyond national borders to locate people who happen to be have identical values, hold, hold identical values, and so on and so forth. So it's basically it's a form of connecting with other people who share similar cultural values. Now, you add a language as well. Language spoken by people I have just come back from Kingali, Rwanda, and we are told through oral history that we originated somewhere in East Africa, you talk about Ethiopia, you talk about that part of the African continent and drifted along southwards. Then I talked to my cousins in Uganda, in Tanzania, in Rwanda, they normally said, we heard about the similar stories why did you move down south? And we normally say, well, we, there must be some reasons. And this is up to you, young people, to research into this, to find answers, to put together research that will help to help us strengthen bonds between our various communities. You talk about African unity. You talk about the question of connecting with people 
who, are, who might be far away from your particular village. In Oshereru we say, no kokure, no So these are some of the things that help some of us when we're in exile for so many years. We found people beyond the African continent who became part of us. Our friends from China, that's another example. And elsewhere in the world, we have people who became associated with our aspirations to free ourselves from the bondage of colonialism and our party system that prevailed in this country a couple of years ago. So these are some of the things that we need to be innovative. We need to identify things that will help to build and strengthen our various communities to look beyond our local borders to connect with those with whom we share particular values. And the values are not limited just to culture and languages. They can be extended further as you dip into history and understanding about certain aspects of our life and history. We will be able to find many things around which we can build the necessary bridges, connections for the good of the community and for the good of our country as a whole. So, when I was in Kingali, I was talking to a member of parliament, a young lady, and we talk about the cleanliness. Why is the city of Kingali so clean, spotless? The culture of campaigning to make sure that one's environment is clean, no papers are dropped. <coughs> this is also connected to the sort of thing that we can pick up and use for the good of our own country. And I was talking to this member of parliament and she was saying to I said, look, if this is something that is confined to the city of Kingali, or is it something that has become part of your culture spreading across the country? And she said to me, even in the rural Rwanda, you find communities in every part of the country have taken on board the question of cleaning up the environment to make sure that everything is organized and there is a clean environment that is conducive to good health and good environment. And then she went further and she said, even when we, when a young lady uh, is identified to get married to someone in another area, the community there particularly are, are so conscious that when they send this young lady got married to another neighborhood, she will go there and become the ambassador of the area where she hailed from. In other words, we don't want our young lady who got married to another neighborhood to be found wanting. In other words, she must become a representative in terms of cleanliness, in terms of being conscious of wanting to contribute to a very good neighborhood. So this is, these are the things that we have to think about when we embark upon a project of this kind. That it is something much more, it, it, it connects with education, with health, with so many other things that add, are able to add values to our well-being as a nation, as a country. So, in this case, the question when a young man 
whisper to his parents in the case of one's paternal aunt, Hongave, hmm? representing the maternal side, that is when the ball starts moving. People are sent to go and whisper to the, to the would-be in-laws to say, in the old days, talk about but we have moved on from that stage now. We are talking about technology. Huh? To be not just a typical housewife, but to add value to, to her new in-laws and to the community and to the region and to the nation and be ambitious wanting to serve the African Union, move to Addis Ababa and beyond, be a, an international civil servant, join the United Nations. All these things are important, are important. We are no longer talking about confining uh, my daughter-in-law to simply collecting firewood and collecting water. We want my daughter-in-law to be, become somebody who can contribute decisively to nation building and to be an agent of change. In other words, not be confined. We talk about women's empowerment, women's emancipation. We talk about all these things that are important in building one Namibia, one nation. So these are some of the things that we have to revisit with a clear mind that our Owakwauti clan is, has got an agenda that we want to communicate to government institutions to say we are an agenda for change to inspire and to, to make sure that we have a clear agenda about the girl child never to be left behind but these are some of the things that have kept our women behind. And it got something to do with the history. The history of our country, not just Namibia, we are talking about the African continent. That's why all these ideas were revisited to make sure that we contribute decisively to mobilizing our country and make sure that we march together. We march together. And we talk about having your, your wife not behind you, but beside you. Right. All these things are things that are deliberately thought about to make sure that we contribute to the strengthening and building a nation that moved with time and committed to a very clearly defined agenda. In this respect, in the first instance, the question would be, who are the mothers and maternal angles of the bride to be? Mwashe in Novongundwe, the Mukaona, Owani. We had to, to look for that, and we are basically doing this in order to build a network. A network of support, we become one. Huh? We become one. And um, sometimes I also say to my to my sons and say, yes, Peri V Pashi uh, and say, um, you remember, you have to tell me who is this young lady you you are visiting, she might be related and might be even a sister. So you have to inform me. This is my way of trying to control the situation to make sure that uh, uh, we got to be 
serious. I don't want to interfere too much nowadays. We are living in the 21st century, not like in the old days where we control everything. But it's all about really wanting to ensure that there is stability. I'm not going to pretend to you. With my daughters as well, the same thing. I mean, you know, in particular, I'm much more conservative than my late wife. He was a bit more liberal and willing to let things drift on. I am the one who will put the brake on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but now you understand why I'm saying all these things. It's all about stability. It's all about ensuring that you made a choice. But the choice is much, is much deeper. It goes beyond the person you are bringing to the family. Because we want to make sure that we form the necessary bond and work together for the good of the two who have chosen to live together. Now, the unexpressed meaning of that inquiry you wanted to check will first be to establish the wealthiness to align the family with such a people. We normally want to know, are they people of honor? Can they be relied upon as part of the family? Are they from a loving family in terms of the people? Do they care? Are they caring type? Are they hospitable? You know, when you, you visit, uh, you normally you are to settle down, you are given a glass of water or tea before we get into the very serious conversation. All these things are part of the cultural values that we are celebrating as far as of our quality clan is concerned. Are they hard working? Discipline? Are they quiet? Not the noisy type. <laughs> Um, are they capable of royal being royalty in marriage that the people of honor these are questions that are normally entertained raised in, to make sure that you can have a foundation that will help the two young people we are putting together so I'm basically saying this is why people talk about the need to make sure that we, the, fam the two families will begin to understand each other. I'm, I'm a, I might be overdoing it a bit, but bear with me. Yeah. So, to illustrate this point, when a child is born, sometimes also, people make funny comments about kadango. <laughs> Uh, uh, they, you, are, you are mocked that you resemble your maternal angle's behavior if, if people know each other oh, that one yeah. 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 people say these things but these are things sometimes they become part of of the way how people identify people, mark them, and so on. And uh, why? We want the best. We want to make sure that we build on a firm foundation. And these are things that we cannot run away from. They become part of our values that we hold dear to ourselves. I, I'm not coming to the point why I'm here. I've been requested to come here. I was therefore very happy to be invited to move away from the place where I'm working where I'm preoccupied with keeping rules and order and asking grown-up people with grey hair to keep order. We only allow one person. <laughs> we are not we allow one person to speak 
and not many people at the same time. So I'm delighted to be here at an event that has got something to do with strengthening our ability to strengthen our cultural values and to, to, to prepare young people for the future by reminding them about certain values within the community and to make sure that they start on the right <coughs> footing. And so I'm happy to be here to be a witness to the Obakwauti Keanda or our quite the under and the clan and the value that they attach to the to the culture. And I'm happy to to bear witness to this gala dinner that has been organized with a view to uh, mobilize resources for the good of the community to uphold cultural values and to strengthen our ability to be organized in terms of what we believe in and make sure that we pass on these cultural values to the younger generation. Asian struck me as being both a someone it's a summon and a blessing at the same time. For in our culture, blessing comes from and through one's father. In that regard, I felt an instant obligation to immediately accept the invitation. That's why I came even earlier than some of the people who are supposed to be here to get organized. <laughs> so let me, from the bottom of my heart, thank the Obakwauti clan for having thought of the reunion that started way back on the 24th of June 2022 at almost Serakumba, the historic birthplace of one of our legendary national resistance leader and the hero, Chief Kahime Mwa Gugauba. I was also informed that when this clan converged at, at that particular place, their main concern was to use their clan to rekindle, revive, the unity with other Namibians in, Kench, in Kenshinship and to promote the unity and identity in diversity across all communities with whom they share common edge in terms of the clan and the values they attach to their particular clan. It is encouraging to promote and do everything to enhance our destiny in harmony. Cultural values provide that framework for helping to remind us where we have come from and where we are going. We are people <laughs> who have deep roots. We have come a long way and this is the sort of thing that they kept us, kept us going with determination and commitment to tell the story about our history, where we come from, and why it is important to preserve what we have. I understand that the clan has more laudable social activities such as a mooted extra attract cultural expo to showcase culture and heritage that will encourage various groups to present their cuisine, traditional attires. We've seen them tonight 
and many other things that we have not even thought of, that we still have to research on in order to find them and list them so that we can increase a better understanding about our history and our past. That usually comes from active engagement, involvement, and as I was talking about, I remember talking to our late chief, Paramount Chief Kwae Mariwako, but he is so rest in peace. He used to talk to me about how we have moved from uh, Central Africa, there is a place uh, that we are supposed to have hailed from called Harare. If you Google that, it will tell you a story about maybe the, the name Herero might have been in the process of shifting, migrating, moving, might have been changed from that to what we now call Herero today. But these are things that academics and scholars of the time you live in now can dig into and find out. Research and teaching does not stop. It's a continuous process that we have to engage in to discover more things that we did not know. And that is not something to be done overnight. It's ongoing and it's part of the process of strengthening the identity of the community. So, uh, you have set yourself an agenda. I also see the fact that um, you are truly committed and it is therefore I'm happy to see our various traditional leaders having come from far and particularly our good friends from the Ondonga community who are here with whom we have a strong affinity that we all know that they've been part and parcel of the connection during the uprising 1904, 1908, they were part and parcel of that resistance from the other side of Etosha. And this is all facts that we can go into, discover. You can write academic uh, studies, you can do all sorts of things. It's the sky is the limit. So this is a project dealing with culture, that is the context, and there is still an opportunity to do more. I also see that the world is a village. We talk about a village, um, a global village, that we are no longer far away from each other. We, have, we can connect with the rest of other people who are engaged in similar activities. We can learn from them. Our neighbor <coughs> from South Africa, they are here through the embassy. You can inquire how do you deal with similar cultural activities, how do you organize yourself, and we are able to benchmark with them and see how, what progress they are making, what we can learn from them, and what they can learn from us. All these things are important. This is how we strengthen linkages, linkages between um, communities and nations. Um, allow me to conclude by applauding the Owakwauti, uh, Keanda, and the clan for this great initiative. Continue investing your time and energy in promoting our unity in diversity and giving meaning to my Namibia, my country, and my pride. It is very heartwarming that the Owakwauti clan has thought of using that which they share with others to bring everyone together and spend an evening like this. I wish we had time to go deeper, but this is the beginning. It's the beginning where we can begin to improve on every event that you're organizing will be evaluating at the end of the day and say where we did well, where we need to improve, there is always a room to improve what we have done. 
They say Rome was not built in one day, but it is a continuous process. And as we go, we perfect the kind of arrangement that we are organizing so that they fit into the timetable that is reasonably manageable. So, congratulations, well done, and I think uh, you made us proud. This is only the beginning, and there is a room to do much more and um, with much better um, resources as time goes on. I would like to wish you well, wish you the necessary strength, energy, and I really want to say, get on with the job. As you go on, we'll be behind you, we'll assist where we can, and I hope at uh, this event are uh, able to lay the necessary groundwork for further um, activities. Such support can be both in kind as well as um, with those who are able to donate financially directly. And I, I will be watching from where I am to see how, what progress you are making. May our Kwauchi and clan gather dinner be a great success for all, all, all of us. And enjoy the evening. Director of Proceedings, thanks very much for the opportunity. The National Assembly Speaker, Prof. Peter Kachavive, Mr. Leo from the Chinese Embassy, brothers and sisters from the South African Air Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I am Major General Rita David Mandeka, Senior Councillor in the Ondonga Traditional Authority, representing Tate Ongkwanilwa, Philippon Chumba Nangolo of Ondonga Traditional Community, who wanted to attend this event in person. However, due to the pressing issues in Ondonga tradition community, he is not able to attend this magnificent maternal event. His speech is as follows. I'm humble and feel honored to be invited in this honorable cultural occasion. It's indeed a wonderful event as it is trying to bring together lost relatives. I'm purposely using the term lost relatives because I know for a fact that some of you are meeting here for the first time. You did not know some of the people that you are seeing here belong to the same clan. Again, we must mindful too for the fact that colonialism has dispersed our people in different directions. I'm standing here to address you, Wakauti, but I'm sure you all belong to other clans by virtue of one's birth. What I mean here is that. There are some of you who are of Apauti from the mother's side. The of an Apauti, which refers to the father's side, and then Oku, Okuyana of Apauti, which again refers to your father's father. Ladies and gentlemen, I try to illustrate this just to show you how interconnected we are, or at best how we relate. That was ceremony. I'm standing here addressing this wonderful occasion, knowing fully well that among you are my relatives who are from Oshikotoke clan. Events like this are always air open in the sense that they bring people together and enable them to trace one another for acceptance by his or her relatives clan. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here as a clan. Believe me, a gathering like this is a beautiful one 
and a way of bringing harmony amongst our people, and which which goes down to the eradicate tribalism, it is brings a distant relative together, who by then did not know that they are related. Colonialism and apartheid systems displaced our forefathers and mothers to such an extent that some of our parents were forced to flee. In that process, some of found themselves far from where they originated and elsewhere. Some were forced by the war and end up in the north of the country, some northwest of Opuo, and just some found themselves in Botswana, South Africa, and further elsewhere in Angola and also in the African diaspora. Therefore, on an event like this is commendable. Dr. Ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, allow me the opportunity to conclude with my speech so I could also mingle and trace my relatives in this gathering. As I know, there are some of my relatives people among you. I thank you. Thank, thank you, MC of the ceremony. Honorable Professor Peter Kaja Vivi, Major General Mbandeka, Chinese Embassy, Honored Guest, Good evening, Wenda. And to the Chinese people, I would like to say, Ni Hao. It is an honor to share a work on behalf of His ex Excellency uh, Tenjui Midonzi. South Africa and Namibia share a lot in common, and our people are one. And today, the two countries are enjoying very warm relations. That is why we felt, that is why we felt honored when we received the invitation to be part of this wonderful event. Your celebration is ours. The celebration of cultural events like this reminds us of who we are as people. Recently, South Africa High Commission held a similar event. We were celebrating our heritage and the motive was to strengthen the relations between South Africa and Namibia as brotherly nations. The Honorable Speaker, Prof. Peter Kacha Vivi, already spoke about the need to think broadly as part of a broader African and global community. As South Africa, we couldn't agree more. The South African High Commissioner received your message a few minutes ago and she communicated her appreciation of your prayers. She wishes you the best and hopes you meet in the future. May this be the beginning of greater things. A journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. Thank you. Over Kawaditle. Thank you. Fun event. Thank you so much. Okay, so we actually done and dusted in terms of the speeches for tonight. Very much grateful again for the patience for staying throughout and sticking out with us. We're very much grateful. Now we move on to the pledges. Let's dig deeper into our pockets. That's why we're here, right? To keep this event alive. It's through donations, isn't it? In the same vein, we also like to express our profound gratitude to the current sponsors that have sponsored the event. We've already read them out. We still don't have them. Mm -hmm. You can read them out. Okay. The sponsors that make the event very possible is ShopRight, Checkers of Namibia, Omutengwa Master Borika Shiwanyo, Omutengwa Leonard Yarunguru, Dr. Hange Sita Trading. Chinese Embassy na Epson Wangu Ta. Oh my God, my God, my God.